Gitties, Gitties. on the guys, balls, and all variations of the species. Welcome to a very special episode 99 of The Unmonetizables, the official podcast of the Fort Chronicles, the Steps of Podcast, to the Empty Scots Networks, Scots with Soul Podcast, and CD Uncle Podcast, to the unofficial official podcast. My name is Captain Privilege, and with you through no choice of their own, our Grandmaster Tech. What are you going to do when you get into triple digits? Can you count that high? I don't say triple digits. Ah, Mr. Yagi Young. Hello. Why can't we say triple digits? Never mind. Just keep rolling on. And with us, we've got a, 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 a smorgasbord to steal a envelope phrase uh, in the chat. We've got Man oh, TV. Go fuck yourself. Eh? Thank you very much. I will do. Uh, but you can't be there. Uh, we've got Tony. <laughs> if Yagi interrupts me again, he's getting cancelled. <laughs> presumptive nominee for the Create Scotland ad when we are graced by your presence today so thank you for joining us and we also I have we're leaving politics out of this the one and only <laughs> listen that's no politics that's change and we need change okay uh, but yeah for a change uh, this is M Polk is with us uh, once again that made no sense but I will in the future what Say hi, Zemblo. What the fuck? Oh, you hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was just listening to you. I thought you were going to say something Listen else. To your <laughs> absolute fucking inane drivel uh, rant there, privilege, <laughs> and it made no sense, so I wasn't paying attention. Cool. Uh, yeah, how are we doing today, folks? Are we all, are we all, are we all fucking groovy? Are we all happy? Yeah, totally it's all good. Bet you all are here. Good, good. That's, that's what I want to hear. That's what I like to hear. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Do you I know think what I don't like to hear? Right, so I'm then interrupting the pre-segue of the start of the no, show. No, I was just going to see your voice. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh! See, I would expect that for somebody with your star sign, Yagi. I, I would well, expect that for somebody that isn't tap, rap a tap tapping on the keyboard really loudly. Oh, Christ, are you kidding? That's all it ever <laughs> fucking does. Uh, yeah, speaking of star signs, what is your star sign, Yagi? I'm an Dr. Aries. Murphy. You're a fucking Aries, are you sure about yeah, that? So you're, you're, yeah, you're going to tell me I'm a Pisces. This happened four fucking years ago and everybody went wild about it and then they all forgot about it again. So, do you know what? It's all bullshit anyway, who cares? What? Is this some sort of childhood drama <laughs> the, the, thing going the, the, on the here? The 13 star sign thing happened about four years ago and people were like, Oh, there's a new star sign? No, I'm, I'm this star sign. I've always been this star well, sign. Well, technically it didn't happen four years ago. It was spoken of four years ago that the Earth would be tilting on its axis. And it has finally, uh, fully reached that I axis. Mean, the Earth is not an axis. And well, therefore, I thought the Earth was flat. And then, well, <laughs> as yes, Tony, see, Tony knows the truth. Vote Hendo 2020 for the truth. Okay, that's what we care about here. Right. Uh, but yeah, the fucking, for some reason, NASA decided to let everyone know that <laughs> the, the official uh, new star sign, I the 13th NASA's sign, because right. 13 a weird number for these uh, creepy little fucking um, NASA star sign Satanist type people. Uh, the Opificus, Opic, o- o- Officius star sign, however the fuck you pronounce it. Do I try that again? No, I don't really, to be honest. Uh, snakes and, and staffs and all sorts of weird shit going on in the imagery and the symbology. But, so it's like yeah, uh, told you. They've bumped, basically that's bumped Sagittarius along a bit uh, and carved out that's a chunk from one. Scorpio, but therefore also shunting everybody along ever so slightly. Uh, I, thankfully, I'm still uh, my star sign, but oh, I'm not that telling you what so that is. Wow. And, uh, so much uh, fuss to make about stuff that doesn't even bloody exist. Even that's I made a, like, a reply on the full com- or comment in the full situation saying they could not give less of a fuck. You want to keep your I'm old just... star sign? Go and keep your old star sign. You want to use your new star sign? Go ahead, because once again, we do not fucking care. We are busy with space and shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm confused as to how NASA is involved. NASA is about science and, like, 
Astronomy. Yeah, but totally the Zambolgate is a different thing. <laughs> totally Zambolgate. You're so right. I mean, the the stars and alignments of stars and, and planets and, and the effects that the planets have on our fucking solar system and, and our beings is just such a fucking... <laughs> no, no, no. Be about Made planetary thing, thing, you know? planetary well. alignments are real and all the rest of it. However, oh. the perceived light from those bodies is so impossibly ancient that it's like it does doesn't matter to us right now, right here, on this well, well, miserable little ball of mud. Well, you mean like, can you? If it's impossible, Agent, it's, it, it, it's not going to be at all, is it? I'm sorry, right, that's it, that is fucking it. <laughs> so you see, if you sit and blame your behaviour or your fucking thinking patterns or your attitude or your star sign, congratulations, you're a fucking mug. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mug? Is it one of these? Like, go on a tirade and just go, uh, uh, go, a a... And go, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's just because I'm an Aries. No, it's not. It's because you're a cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you have a population as big as our, the population of our planet is, and let's say one twelfth of that population is born in a particular star sign, are you going to tell me that many people have exactly the same attributes because of when they were born? Yeah, we'll Bullshit. decide that all, all Pisces <laughs> are predominantly psychopaths. Basically, oh, I just think it's really interesting <laughs> to hear uh, you. I don't know, I've only ever had bad experiences with Gemini's. Oh, I'm sorry, you, you probably couldn't hear me talking there. Uh, I'm just saying <laughs> that <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's very uh, endearing to hear that the, the human race still thinks they know absolutely everything there is to know about space and its effects on their human bodies and psyches. It's, what do you mean I'm our human, human bodies? Oh, no, do oh, oh, That's why oh, like, I've got it so figured no, out. Ophesius isn't even new. No one's saying it's new, but it's was was right. fucking yeah. discovered by fucking the Ottomans back in Byzantium, but they couldn't fit it into the calendar here, so they went, fuck it, we'll put it on the bench. <laughs> and then we'll squash it in later. Start a long bench. time on the bench. The star time bench. Well, speaking of being benched uh, <laughs> from the sidelines, Dr. Disrespect has given some new insight, a little follow up, folks, uh, as we all know. The world is awaiting with bated breath to find out what the fuck and why the fuck one of the biggest streamers on the planet was uh, yeeted clean off the platform uh, with no real explanation given. Uh, and he done several interviews in which he didn't explain any of it. So there uh, we go. Yeah. I think he uh, basically came up to say, say I'm no Scooby lads. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we can safely say one thing. He won't be going back to Twitch. He's uh, spoke about the possibility of legal action. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's any kind of hashtag Me Too stuff. Uh, the, the vibes that you get from the collective interviews is that in actual fact, it could quite possibly be something to do with him speaking of a link between 5G and COVID, and plenty of places are now leaning heavily on uh, quote-unquote conspiracy theories. Uh, I know as for a fact there's uh, murmurs and rumours of laws getting passed in the UK of making it illegal to speak of such things, or at uh, least here um, we go. making it very difficult to see, uh, say such things on any platform. Th th this bugs my tits from because... What I heard, from what I heard, it's because he's got a TV deal in the works. Probably. Why but, would Twitch? Wouldn't that just help promote Twitch, though? If, if you'd think. Yeah, but it just bugs just bugs my tits because I there's a lot of conspiracies, out the, conspiracy theories out there that are like parts of them you're like I can kind of see it, and there's some of them you're like <laughs> seriously, come on. But if you take them mostly for entertainment value, like you're reading a freaking story, they're just that. They're kind of entertaining. So it's like, oh, we'll just ban them. Well, how about you just make them entertaining? Yeah, that's it. I mean, like, basically, he's got he's dropped some new kind of weird trailer. It's just like a little bit of imagery of him and some music. Uh, he done some sort of a test uh, stream thing on his YouTube. Uh, which is, you know, like, let's be honest, it's a bit of a fucking a huge hint. Oh, that's why he got deplatformed. <laughs> No, this is after. Oh. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, this is recently. Yeah, uh, um, keep up tech. Fucking hell. No, they got one. Good, yeah. But yeah, we still, we still to this day have no idea. I think it's going to be really awesome to find out because he could pretty much just like fucking <laughs> make a movie or some shit out of this stuff if, if he has a really good triumphant return. And even if he doesn't, you know, there's going to be books and 
fucking deals and stuff flying left, right, and centre. Yeah, because that's what I want to pick up when I go to the bookshop. You know, is yeah, you know, you're like he'll team up with Sasha Baron Cohen and do something crazy. Oh god, I hope the fuck not. That fucking lefty little cuck is an absolute shell of what he used to be. Funny. Remember that? <laughs> I remember it being funny. Not politics. <laughs> yeah, the term left. Right. Right. I, still remember, I still remember like the time when he had the Ali DCs on Channel 4 way, way back and he had on Coldplay. <laughs> And it was mm. like, there's Chris Martin singing his brains out and he's putting all this like, trip hopping out over the back of it. And Chris Martin, fair play to him, sings over the top of it and absolutely blasts the lungs. I'm like, dude, this is a shame the band turned out to be shit, but there you go. Yeah, well, you know, there's all good things must come to an end. Uh, just like the absolutely fabulous career of one Jake Paul, who is <laughs> risking, risking a great big cancellation <laughs> as he hosted a fuck off uh, Kobe party, basically, where he had lots of kids, lots of youngins, lots of influencers around at his house. Uh, oh, dear. Turns out less than a couple of days where he was actually in contact with someone who has now been confirmed to have. have COVID-19 uh, <laughs> and uh, not even the mayor of the, 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 the state that he's in could uh, could fucking hold back from letting rip and say that she wants to see uh, as much charges thrown at this little motherfucker as possible. Uh, I do have one caveat on this though, I think it's kind of fucked. I think that you can blame Jake Paul all we want because he's just an easy target because he is who he is and has done what he's done. That's no secret. But when the entire world feigns injury and then feigns uh, the importance of lockdown and quarantine whilst still allowing such things <laughs> as protests and still standing by while massive beach parties go on and fucking all sorts of flagrant disregards, uh, I think it's, it's nothing more than mixed sure, messages. I can understand protests. I'm but the rest of it, mm. no, no, I can't, I can't it's it's like, fucking lie in it. Do we think it's a kind of last straw situation considering he also did that thing where he went around that mall as it was being raided? Not protest to lockdown, I mean, I mean like, you know, I can understand people doing the like Black Lives Matter protests and stuff because, you know. Oh, I can understand it, but what my point being is that it's mixed messaging. They, by all means, you might go out and do that, you're going to do that, but the ones that are in charge, the ones that are supposed to be setting the fucking standards here, are literally dropping the ball left, right and centre with that shit. Mm. Those people mm. should have been directly ordered to get the fuck out of the way. Get the fuck back in your house. Sorry, but they should have. Same with the fucking beach parties and stuff. If we're, if we're going to take it literally here, if we're going to be fucking, you know, cracking on at fucking Jake Paul, which, as you say, is easy enough to do. He's already fucked himself in more ways than one. But I think yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of obvious that you've, you've set yourself up for a, a fall with that one. What you said, bro? Uh, no, sorry, I cut you off. What are you saying? No, he talked about fucking someone. I said I would. Oh, nice. Would you give to Jake Paul, would you? He's got COVID. You don't want that. You'll catch half of him. I think you need to <laughs> worry about catching other stuff half of him, let alone COVID. Yeah. <laughs> like a bad sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> like rubbish choices and haircuts. <laughs> what? And this, oh, that's really what we're, oh, that's really what we're going at Jake Paul for. <laughs> He's got a bad haircut. He not make funny good. <laughs> Holy fuck, guys! <laughs> well, come on. If we put any more energy into it, we might actually get involved. That's true. That is true. You don't. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I mean, why bother getting involved when we can cut straight through? to the fucking, the meat of the podcast. The bit that everybody waits for. The, the finest bit of the show. Aye, that's right. Ben. Cutting in a little early today. Twitter uh, moments! That's the one. That is the fucking one, my man. Do you know what I mean? That's it. Oh, that needs to be a jingle now. <laughs> Wagwan. Well, if somebody's... Stop that out and make that a jingle. <laughs> yeah, if somebody's got to cut that, they're more than, uh, they're more than fucking... Uh, obliged to... Uh, this was one of the stories that I possibly, probably should have made an actual story uh but i was following it a little more closely than i was um paying attention to what i was actually putting into our moments so <laughs> God. Uh, everyone's uh favorite uh, fucking host of wild and out and uh fucking 
you know, general good guy, ex of Mariah Carey, has discovered uh, the no-no bits that you shouldn't say. The no-no things. The don't know say that stores. Uh, and uh, came out on a podcast where he decided to get Professor Griff, one of the most <laughs> prolific podcasters, uh, not podcasters, sorry, uh, prolific um, speakers and auditors, public enemy, it was before your time, bro. And he is uh, quite known for his um, quote unquote conspiratorial views on the oppression of the black man. So he's and- a so he's a what? What? Sorry. He's a psychopath. Uh, well, he's, he's got some interesting views. I think. Psychopath. Yeah, he was in Public Enemy. Still a psychopath. Yeah, it's uh, he's, you know. That's if that's how you wish to put it. That's fine. But the way that Karen decided to put it was sit and talk about white people and how white people, because they don't have melanin, are actually more savages and more animals. Uh, you see that's- that's- the neck Karen. And oh, this thank is you. I was why, waiting for that. This is what I've made. <laughs> you missed the segue. The segue was fucking I was wondering blatter. where you were going with that because there was like long. literally nothing in the Twitter moment in any of that segue. <laughs> you, do, you need to listen more. You need to pay attention more. I'll you try. I try, but you know, more. it's really uh, difficult sometimes. Yeah, uh, white people are savages and animals, uh, and uh, there was some mention of some certain types of people. Won't say the G word because we'll get banned off Viacom <laughs> from its twenty-year history. With Viacom, uh, is now fucking over, uh, and it's been a right mixed reaction. A lot of he's people just were jealous kinda, like, because his wife gets slagged off Eminem. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's what it is. Wow, he's like hanging on to that. That's that's interesting. He's uh, he's been somewhat cancelled by Viacom. Uh, a lot of people were quick to point out that well, we're the Fox cancellation mob because if a white person got caught saying those type of things that he'd said, they'd have been fucking pounced upon. But yeah. there was also the mixed reaction of people in the black community stepping forward and support, such as uh, P Diddy. Uh, aka Puff Daddy. Uh, right, because I really get on talk about what P Daddy thinks. Puffy Combs uh, reaching out and saying, uh, oh, Come on, join, uh, what the fuck is it, free TV or some shit? Uh, 100% black owned um, TV channel posted on the internet, so I don't know how it's a TV channel, but you know. Uh, and there's, there's been mixed reactions, and he, he has come out and he hasn't apologised. Uh, an actual fact, he's argued his fucking point uh, that, well, that he should then. be allowed to have these conversations. I think it's really funny that he's the one that fucked up in a podcast where he's had someone, from <laughs> Professor Griffon, who has arguably way more controversial views <laughs> about <laughs> rappers and about Hollywood and about all sorts of fucking stuff, you know? But hey ho, Nick Cannon, he is no, now. What do you get us right? Are they. Uh... It's quite a it's quite a flip floppy subject, right? Because I do get where he's where coming from. If we want to better ourselves as a society, we need to be able to have these conversations. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But yep. in the current climate, <clears throat> um, in the current climate, no, nah, that's just you kind of just go around about saying that. <clears throat> so, Canon, wherever you're the next going to see you, you're getting slapped, you prick. Yeah. <laughs> we need to have these conversations, to but you need to not have that shitty view. <laughs> what? I think the problem is, is, think of what? <laughs> when you go to Zen Block, when you go. Is Zen Block still there? I think, uh, I think Yangy just kind of broke his train there. <laughs> I think Zen blocks lagged it. Pause oh, yeah, bro, you know, reconnect or something if you can hear us, my man. Uh, but yeah, so I, it's it's a weird one because I think yeah, I think I have, went a bit fucky. There we go. I have constantly argued uh, that in actual fact you should really uh, be able to have these conversations because if you don't have these conversations, then they go into the darkness. Yeah, and, and, and call a whole group of people savages. Well, <laughs> unless nonsense, you can call nonsense savages. That's okay. 
I mean, this is really that far off. I'm um, half the savages, we don't fucking want them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the context of the conversation he was having, it was interesting. I won't say that much. You know, I, I haven't heard the full podcast, but I would say I'm more inclined to go listen to his full podcast, knowing that he's having people like Professor Griff on now. It's fucking damn interesting. Why have I got a funny feeling you're trying to defend Cannon bef- without pissing me off? <laughs> Why you keep saying, oh, it's, it's, it's interesting. I wouldn't have to say that one. If you're going to support him, go out and say it for fuck's sake. <laughs> I, I, I quite clearly said I support his right to say whatever and however he feels. Uh, I just, uh, it's kind of coy and it is funny because, you know, black man get gagged oh, you don't up against white guys. It's kind of weird. <laughs> cancel, I cancelled the envelope somehow. <laughs> I destroyed his internet. Uh, but yeah, never think you're that important, Manny, to me that I wouldn't offend you, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> what is offensive, though, is uh, Sky News letting us oh, know. There's, that, a thing, there's a thing you kind of mulled over. How much of what I last said, said over came out because I dropped out, guys? I said over hateful speech and anti Semitic comments. Mm-hmm. I said, you can't, you can't the point. No, I didn't mull over it. I cowardly never mentioned the word because you can't say the J word these days without being called anti-Semitic and kicked off. Well, if, Nick, if Nick fucking Cannon with a fucking hit show and 20 years fucking worth of hosted and shit can't speak about the J words, then I ain't fucking touching that shit with a barge pole, bro. <laughs> like I said at the start, the segue was he discovered the no-no words. He discovered the stuff you can't talk about if you're in fucking mainstream. Whether you believe that shit or not, this is this is this is the state of affairs we're in these days. Certain things you ain't gonna get away with fucking even speculating about, bro. That is that that is just proof in the fucking pudding, McCann. You know what I mean? The writing is on the wall, much like Sky News reporting on Banksy's newest spray paint on the wall. Which further just makes me believe that Banksy is not actually one person, and that it's probably actually a conglomerate of of fucking uh, companies uh, and executives somewhere that are just commissioning fucking spray artists to go and do this sort of shit. There's footage of him like walking onto the sub onto the fucking London Underground. Oh, oh with a so massive... is he... <laughs> I've just read up on that Nick Cannon thing, so. It wasn't just white people he called savages. <laughs> Who else? Let's, let's, uh, let's just say that's why he's getting done for anti Semitism. I have listened to uh, many a sound bite, and what I could piece together was the main savage parts he was talking about were white people. He did then go on to reference Jewish people uh, and, uh, and symbolizing, symbolizing them with white people. And European. And then started talking about them owning banks. And then started talking about them owning uh, Hollywood. And shit. That's borderline fascism. Well. That's how fascism came about. So back yeah. on the train. Being banned for saying stuff, yeah, it was so fascist. Bro. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right? All right, okay, cool. Thanks oh, on the train. I made a fucking tweet about this. Do you know what they could have done instead of removing it? They what? could have just like made people pay to go and see it and made a fortune. Or, out of it. or you know, just yeah. chopped that bit out of the train and sold it in an art gallery. Well, actually, yeah, I remember they had that one that the ga- that Banksy put out in the in the gallery for sale, and then as soon as it was actually the sale was approved, then it had like a shredder built into the frame and it shredded the piece yeah, of artwork. But that made it more. Uh, that made it worth more. Yeah, <laughs> kind of backfired, crazy. really, didn't they? Yeah, the person that bought it was just like, "Holy shit, I can actually sell this for like twice as much as I just bought it for." Holy fuck! <laughs> I am just extremely confused as to why a gentleman was allowed, quote unquote, Banksy was allowed to get into the London Underground with a fucking giant compressed air canister. Well, because if you Is see the video, Banksy? he looks like one of the COVID cleanup boys. But it's, it because they, they clean the carriages out that. after their uses. Something right about that. I don't know. I, I just and Sky News promoting it. I, I don't know. You're talking about an anonymous artist that's been going for the past twenty to thirty years. I'm pretty sure he knows how to fucking sneak into a train station. 
with Sky News Isn't cameras. The whole thing where Banksy's met to be like well, multiple people. From what I've been told, oh. it's like it was one of his collective, one of his like his people that work with him that was doing the filming and then passed the footage on. <laughs> I just think there's something odd about a gentleman walking in and out of the London fucking underground with cameras and a giant air compressor. But of course there is. It's 2020. Everything's odd at film. this point. <laughs> I didn't want to put it quite question. so crassly, but the man's correct. Everything is odd in 2020. Well, there's no need to, to shoot me down, guys. There's no need to take <laughs> shots at me, guys, okay? I'm not Megan the Stallion that reveals she suffered gunshot wounds on Sunday. The rapper. Fucking hell. Famous that for the was fucking, a transition uh... into that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus oh, man. Christ. The rapper that was uh, made famous from the Amatevich and uh, such other hits. Uh, announced that she is in recovery after an altercation that left her with a gunshot wound as a result of a crime that was committed against me and wait, done wait. with the intention to physically harm me. Wait, wait. I'm a savage. Uh, oh, Is ratchet wounds. target? <laughs> I've never heard of this bint. And I was going to like get a look at her, but then the picture you've provided... Her heat's Excuse missing. Me. I know, where's the headshot? Um, pardon the bin. She invented Hot Girl Summer. Okay. The hit of the, the, hit of the year last year. Uh huh. Oh, girl, she was twerking in a video with Lizzo. Yeah, fuck yeah. I know, I know Lizzo vaguely. Good God, you don't, you don't know who Megan Thee Stallion is. Oh but you my know God, that was Lizzo, Lizzo in a battle. Oh, good Lord, is that? Is that... No, I'm a metalhead. Most of this stuff goes past me, bro. It's like I carry <laughs> through a dug. No, you're a fucking metalhead. Better than a skinhead. I keep tapping that notification and it's not coming up, it's weird. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> the, the important thing to take for this ladies is that no matter if you are a savage, you're not fucking bulletproof, okay? Uh, just be careful out there folks, you know? It's not like you're fucking done stepping on a Lego or some shit. Uh, but speaking of Lego, uh, oh, yeah. Lego <laughs> version of the classic NES console is coming soon. Then it costs you more than a Nintendo Switch. Uh, <laughs> a, a, Lego, melt the Lego. a Lego version of yeah. the classic NES console. You ought to see the video, Yagi, it's mental. Do you know the funniest thing is, right? I could buy a Nintendo, the telly that that's playing on, the game that that's playing, or, and still have about enough money for, I don't Lego. know, 40 Mayfair after it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the I mean, find, right finding a relatively decent Lego. CRTV in a charity shop, finding us a NES at like a, a games convention or an eBay seller, and finding the cartridge for like for the first Super Mario game. Yeah, you're Which probably I've looking got about here. hundred, maybe hundred and fifty quid. So yeah. yeah. That's why I know who is actually spending time sitting building a two thousand six hundred forty six piece set into a. Nintendo console. I don't know. <laughs> That's fucking weird. <clears throat> I, I can't look looking at that the, picture. The it's supposed to be. Part it, though, the coolest part of it is, is from from the Lego building standpoint, is the way that the screen inside changes because it's on like a, a rotating spool thing, so it's yeah. a continually changing. Don't thing get me wrong. I think it's quite. Along. I think it's quite innovative. I think it's quite unique, and it will be a massive buying point for like Lego collectors. Oh yeah, it's going to oh, be a few hundred of these sitting on shelves. Staying in the box, never coming out. Unlike the Lego collectors, I'm not buttoned up the back. <laughs> it's a huge marketing technique, and it's paying off really well. Uh, and I think what you're basically going to get is a string of announcements saying that all your Lego games will be coming to the Switch if they're not already fucking there, or some sort of a new partnership. You know, you know? What, like, see what, what I know is will that will they unleash new like they've got the NES eye, but because like you said that that entire game screen's a spool. Will they be unleashing, like, unreleasing new spools? So, like, for, like, Zelda and... Ah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. like a Lego Labo type thing yeah. going yeah. on, where it's not cardboard, yeah. but you can build the Switch into a, just... a, a fucking... <laughs> an actual like, fucking... Like, <laughs> then, all we need, then all we need is a side project, where you basically make, an, you make a Sega Game Gear out of stickle bricks. <laughs> 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 My god, I've not thought about stick up bricks a long bloody time. Stick up bricks, bro. You're dating yourself so hard, man. It's, so it's the fact that those things were multi purpose. You could even use them as a comb. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you don't think it's schizophrenic, though, if you used uh, a stickle brick as a comb. But speaking of schizophrenic, everyone's favourite comic book schizophrenic, uh, Rorschach, is uh, getting a new comic series spin-off from DC, so you can look forward to your favourite character from The Watchmen becoming a black pansexual woman real soon. That's real Marvel soon. that does that. Oh, DC's starting, don't you worry. They'll catch up. No one? No mm -hmm. one in the Rorschach series? Yeah, it's... it's I'll, I like Rorschach, but I'll, I'll wait to see how that pans out before I can I mean, it. I mean, did we see how the TV show panned out? Did anyone watch that garbage? No. That what, annoys garbage. Me, existed? what annoys me is yeah. they're all trying to, they're all trying to become woke. They're all trying to become woke and inclusive, right? And they're going and re-altering cuts backstories and all that. And the way, if you date that way, it just looks forced. It looks like, yeah, oh, look at me, I'm woke now. Oh, thank you. Oh, also... like me, please like me. See if you want to do stuff like this. Introduce new characters. Manny, that's how Snowflake and Safe Space happened. <laughs> right, we'll scratch you're, saying new you're saying about new characters, bro. <laughs> that doesn't happen. You don't have new ideas. Yeah. You don't have new ideas. You and then we you say have a new idea. You will like it. <laughs> When you do have a new idea, you're Marvel and you bring out five heroes that nobody could ever give a toss about, that all have powers that are basically centred around the current cultural zeitgeist of <laughs> being a separate thing from everybody else. And Is that no Captain Planet? Terms. No. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Planet that was bit, that, there's they talked about aging. Jesus Christ, I wasn't even gonna mention Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Captain Planet, he's a hero. Am I just, am I the only person in this entire podcast that when it comes to some of the sexuality, the first thought that's in my mind is it's none of your fucking business? Yep, no. Right. I agree. Ditto. So Ditto. If, like, if we're like that in the real life, then why should it change in media? Because Velma gay though, bro. I know. Because I know. it's a way of... Because Velma was always a fucking... Probably because... Yeah. Because yeah. I look like, at the no, cell comic. No, she wasn't. Velma dated Shaggy for a little bit. And her Can you blame her now? She knew that we found out well, she, dated, she dated Shaggy. Can you blame her? There is a the conspiracy the thing is, that Shaggy's trans, so... Fred. Fred. He's the fucking gayest one. He's the fucking... Hey, where's a neckerchief? Come on! Just because a guy dresses very do you know what, well do you know what doesn't it is? mean he's gay. Do you know what it is? They made Funny. Velma the fucking lesbian because it's more uh, fucking acceptable to be a lesbian and have a fucking woman kiss another woman in the media than it is for a guy to kiss another guy. Ooh, hot take. Yeah. He, no, here, he here's an interesting ready. part of it though, right? Here's the interesting part, right? In a lot of pop culture, people have long accepted the idea that Velma, you know, was playing to the other side. Well, which most people were either Oh, right. So she is. Big deal. And not other people were offended by this and wrote, no, it's not. It's just a cartoon. Then, when the creators come along and go, actually, you know what? Yes, she is a lesbian. And then people go, stop ruining my childhood. She's not a lesbian. <laughs> when, re when really, all that's happened is, is the lesbian community has come and gone, okay, we'll own this character now, please, and all the things that come with it. I and like that. I like that. Take the, it. Just because they actually own the word now and they own the character, now everybody's up in arms like, you can't own this character. That's well, a really interesting take. It was. That's like, a really hey, interesting take. Man. I'm just like, okay. That's a really interesting take because, like, uh, I know uh, one of the podcasts I used to listen to quite a lot, uh, The Daily Planet, was the guys who used to, would talk specifically about computer, uh, comic book fucking movies and stuff. And mm -hmm. when you had your, your newer franchise stuff, like your Star Wars and what have you, and people were crying, like, oh, you've ruined it. You've written the Ghostbusters uh, sequel. Like, oh, you've ruined Ghostbusters. And he's like, no, they haven't. Like, no, so see those they've old made a films? different version. Yeah, they're still see, there. They're see still those there. Old, not exactly. They still exist. You can still go and watch them. If you're watching yeah. the old films raging about the new ones, there's something probably wrong with you, bro. You've missed the point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. if you, if you it's not like watching... someone's come along and scrubbed away episodes one, yeah. you know, three, four, and five. You know, it's like. It's like 3, 4, and 5 still exist. 1, 2, and 3 still exist. I'm and sorry, so right, but see if you are sitting watching a movie and you're like, 
oh, I wonder if that character likes it in the back door, then you are fucking... <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with you. If that is You're the only wrong. thought... You, you do thought, get some fans of some franchises that do get very, very, very involved. If that is I mean, the only like, single mm. brain process you've got through that entirety of the movie, no watching the action sequences, no fucking paying attention to the plot, no watching the character developments from beginning. Don't tell me you watched the congratulations in this you're a fucking and reptile. didn't think that you would give it to Nathan. Like, okay. Have, have well, you, I'll give it to Nathan every yeah. day of the fucking week. Uh, have you guys watched uh, Picard? <laughs> yes, I loved uh, it. I've seen the first right. two episodes, so no. Mm -hmm. Alright, okay. Shut your ears in, Yangi. I shot. <laughs> <Bones off>. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. Right, cool. Because I don't want to give you any spoilers then. Wait, it's on the mute. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. I'm all right with spoilers. Spoilers, anybody? Yeah, go on. Right, cool, right. Uh, okay. Watch it, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the Picard so, spoilers. Yeah, totally. Picard spoilers. So, basically, like, just going based on what Manny was saying, and I completely agree, right? But especially when it feels really forced. Like, because at the yeah. end of Picard, you find out that one of the characters from Star Trek Voyager that everybody quite liked is a lesbian. Right at the frickin' end, Bye. that's just... You know what I mean, though? But it's just, like, rammed in there, and it's made this whole big scene, and it's just like, okay, cool, bro, let me go back to watching Picard. Wait, what was that? Was that in the mm. end of Picard? Yeah. Oh, fucking spoilers, Kinda. dude. What the fuck? I just told you spoilers. spoilers. You're fucking simp. You're I'm back. fucking You're cheater. Right. <laughs> We've had the whole thing. I took the headphones off and everything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think it's... you just trolled you boys. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I think, well, uh, what I can safely say is that I think we're all in some form of an agreement that if you're more worried about what people's genitals and gender yeah. is uh, than, than the actual content of the uh, content exactly. itself. Exactly. Then, or the quality of the content itself, rather, then you should probably retire those thoughts. Uh, speaking of retiring, the rapper Logic announces retirement and final album. Who? Lo Logic? I can see the Logic. He's, right that. He's a British <laughs> rapper, isn't he, Logic? On Thursday, the rapper revealed he would be retiring after the release of the upcoming album No Pressure, saying it's been, no pressure, as you're fucking retiring. It's been a great decade. Now it's time to be great father. The sixth and final studio album is set to be released in July twenty fourth. This shows just how behind Amor because I thought he was an up and comer. No, he is still he is still an up and comer. What the fuck has been the rappers I mean, that have been doing this I'm shit for fifty years and they're all thinking about retirement? I don't even know the guy, but I respect what? him because, like as he says in that f the tweet, he's retiring to, to be a dad. On being a father. That's cool. Fair enough. All for that. Yeah. But it's, it's a sin though when he like, finds it, wakes up, and, well, grows up and finds out he's a rapper. What? That's going to be fucking embarrassing. I, wait a minute, you gave up your dream career for me? What? No, I'm, oh my god, my dad's a rapper. I'm going to have to pretend to have a new dad. <laughs> well, speaking of. It'd be of funny the, if son, the son or daughter turned into a skinhead. Uh, wow. Thing is, though, you, you watch, it'll be like five years from now, there'll be the comeback album. Because <laughs> they'll need a bit more cash yeah, for the house. This, like this, this is a bit of a fucking <laughs> Conor McGregor retirement thing yeah. scheme, I think. You know, uh, I mean, like, you feel this uh, shit like, How many Stop times has Ozzy Osbourne retired? God, I mean, come <laughs> on. How many times has Ric Flair retired? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep keeping, going it rap, keeping it wrapped, though, it's like Ice T has never retired. <laughs> Ice T, <tea>, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that funky sword, I love it. <laughs> Ice tea, yo. <laughs> well, we know he's I'm, I'm, I'm mean, I'm mostly in for body count, like, but I do. I used to have follow his rap, his rap career, and it was quite good. Body count? I bet you fucking yeah. yo. I bet you, you know, I'm ringtone his rappers delight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, uh, daddies, uh, new daddies, uh, to someone who we all want to be our daddy at, secretly at heart, Henry Cavill building a yes. computer is yes. probably what you need to see today. Uh, yes. Paris also got a computer. Yeah, I really need to get rid of watching that. I've been seeing that bounce around my feed for the last few days. Henry Cavill proves <laughs> how easy it is to build a PC. 
I, what, not. What, I love, what I love about this is Twitter uh, just patently promoting uh, toxic masculinity in some way, shape, or form. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's toxic when it ain't good, but by God, when it's a big burly man making a PC, it's no, uh, it's just actually, by the fuck actually, actually, that's not why they're promoting it because yeah. see if you actually watch the video, yeah, it actually makes the same mistakes every card else does when they're building a gaming PC. It makes it so relatable and fucking hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. He has a metal, I, I, I'm pretty sure he has a metal breakdown halfway through the video. Like, as well. does he not gash his finger off the side of the case at one point as well? Like, <laughs> it's not because of his big buff stature and arms and the fact he was doing it in a fucking uh, a, a, a tank top. Sorry all, guys, yeah. I dropped out again. That's uh, right, I, I but it's like upgrade my PC. Also, I was going to say <laughs> Henry Cavill is actually a proper gamer though. I mean, the guy does like his gaming. He can pay yeah. for it too. But true. <laughs> it's like, does it no make a does it no make a point at one point that how come this thing is so damn small yet somehow it's just so damn fucking heavy? Aye. <laughs> it's like I've only put these things in. How like, can it weigh so much? Questioning everything through the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why did it's I not just buy a console? Yeah, it's quite entertaining. <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, speaking. I mean, a lot of people. A lot of people don't forget that. Like, a lot of people seem to forget just because they're celebrities that they're no human. Like they, they yeah. have geeky things that they like. like for instance, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel is a veteran dungeon master. Exactly. I would yeah. love to have a game of D and D with Vin Diesel. Like that would be amazing. Dungeons and Diesel. Dungeons and Diesel. <laughs> 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 or Diesel and Dungeons, as Yangi might prefer. We should totally make it like a Fast and Furious D and D man. That would be the fucking shit. <laughs> That'd be so good. You're coming up for a stunt map. Roll for initiative. Although a triple X D and D is a totally different thing. Roll for a draft. I, I like it. <laughs> Check I'd, lo- I'd love to. I'd love to see the dice tower. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you roll a zero, you hit a three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Was, uh, I think there's a lamppost, but anyway, <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah, I'll right, done. It was a tree. I'm gonna skirt. I'm, I'm gonna dance around that one, uh, Tony. Is what I'm gonna do, just like the new Fortnite That's dance, as they've it. added the Renegade. Don't give a shit. Don't Ren- ruin my I'm favorite a- word. Renegade. They yeah, they danced it. And the Fortnite. Did you say Renegade? And all I get in my head is Mass Effect and real radio. <laughs> 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 the dance created by an uh, American teenager, Jelia Harmon, is available for players to use in Fortnite. It's unclear where the dance being added to the Battle Royale game is part of a licensing agreement. I would imagine after the shitstorm they faced uh, from quote unquote stealing the orange bag kids dance. And they also uh, stole and the Carlton dance. Scrubs dance and the and Carlton, Carlton dance. Yeah, yeah. Hell, so... I'll make a dance for them, give me a few quid, they bother. Jesus, <laughs> Come on, Fortnite has been exploiting kids for the past five years, man. But I think what they've actually done was kind of smart because those people, uh, I think in reflection, lost their cases uh, because the argument was then made that legally speaking, when dances become universal to an extent, they become part of a lexicon, they are seen as kind of public license. And you could argue that the Renegade, having been copied on TikTok a billion fucking times, no longer then is solely uh, held by Jaliah Harmon. No, and if they didn't I... patent it, and if they don't actively seek to keep control of the license and the licensing and the copyright and the patent. Aye, uh, but it's a whole like, weird fucking oh, no, If you if you that is yeah. how TikTok works. It's mm-hmm. like if you at least know who the fuck made something. Believe at least not, reference them. If you're the first person on the TikTok to create that dance and you're the first person with any visible evidence to have originated that set of dance moves, then you're the sole owner. Oh, well, there we go. News. News. Hot news mm. on the show. Uh, uh, that's how it's does that mean, does that mean if why do you think we call it, why do you think we call it the Carlton? Why do you think we call it the Scrubs dance? You know, at, uh, the, at the very least And how did he not win in court then, bro? Because, because they're fucking kids. idiots and the lawyers are morons. Yeah. <laughs> but like at the very least they could at least put like a little fucking statue of the dance move somewhere in the game with the name and shit under it. Yeah, you yeah know, I kind of that, that person. I wonder if that means, right, if TikTok could have existed in the 1950s, if Chubby Checker could have made a few more quid. Chubby Checker. 
you imagine TikTok in the 50s? <laughs> a bunch of fucking hipster girls for the 50s that are like, oh, I wish I was born in 1890. It looks so much better back then. At least the dancing would be goddamn vaginas in your face and fucking singing about eating copyright is a shit. Copyright is a very, very tricky mistress. Oh, yes. Uh, it is. Exactly. I mean, it's like when I was studying artificial technology at college, it was like it was even the case that if you were filming something outside and a car was to go past with a radio going, if you could hear the song to any normal degree in the in the film, then you'd be liable for the copyright Unless of that piece you cut of music. It out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Most most of the time, studios would end up putting a rain tune over the top of it. Uh, it's a really painful dub. It's annoying. Well, so the put the pictures in streaming chat. Well, well, speaking of cutting it out, the pictures are in streaming chat. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cutting it out, Ghost of Tsushima's photo mode has players impressed, and uh, it is the, fucking beautiful. Because speaking from happen. someone that's actually played it, it is oh. I gorgeous. can't wait for my copy. Every game actually, needs not just a photo mode, but like the Rockstar editor in GTA. Every game yeah. has to have that in a photo mode. No, yeah, this one get close um, to your mic, bro. It's, it sounds like you're a little further back. The Ghost of Tsushima and the photo mode has a tracking shot, which allows oh, you to set nice. points, and you can like as you set the points and then you finish up setting them up, it will pan through that entire Aye, sequence. See, this is what every game that should potentially have player made cinematics should have so you can make your own little moves you see where you can record it and then play it back yeah hi see that again Zebblo? so they did kind of have that with Grand Theft Auto but it ended up going a bit hmm yeah <laughs> well it was really good it was really tricky to use though I mean the no, but were not very they weren't very intuitive yeah but like okay it would be like easy to use for example Yangi what <laughs> I mean, you did realise that the people that created Ghost of Tsushima were also responsible for Sly Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that and they were also but... responsible for Infamous. The happy thought well, for me with this you're... game, though, the happy thought for me with this game is I don't know if anybody out here in the in the use in the listeners to this <laughs> wonderful, wonderful show uh, is aware of a channel by the name of Tobe Gaming. Uh, he's a mate of mine, but that's for Toy uh, Gaming. The point. Tobe, as in Toby. Oh, right, Toby. Toby. Uh, he ran a sweepstakes on his channel to win a copy of Ghost of Tsushima and guess who the frickin' winner was? Yours you. truly. Aye. Oh, you. <laughs> I, I, I smell an inside job. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, he drew a hat. You can see the video. He drew it. Aye, the hat was following your name because you emailed him. <laughs> Give me the Tsushima, I'm leaking your boots. <laughs> that was Renegade. No, 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 just giving props to the boy. I'm just happy to win it. With with my chuffing life. (laughs) Well, speaking of giving props, we got to give props to uh, the one and only uh, fucking Zed and Jasmine Thompson because they opened up about their new single, Funny. Who? I thought you guys were going to do that as well. (laughs) No, who? Zed and Jasmine Thompson? Anyone? No, no. I've got none. Uh, Joined Billboard Dance for a Billboard live chat to Billboard. Oh, I know who it's called. Right. Oh, so it's no Z. Z. It's no Z. The only Z. Billboard I've ever Z. known is Zed's a DJ. Zed's a DJ. I know Zed. Oh. So it's not Lord Zed from the Power Rangers. No, no, no. Lord Zed from the Power Rangers was one day. Rangers. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yes, they, they discussed how their new single <laughs> Funny came to be, the process for creating the music video, the last thing that made them laugh really hard, and more. Uh, I, d- I think it's really okay. important at these times that musicians should open up. Just open up about such things. I don't know why that triggered me so like that, but I just. The lights. It's fucking just so weird the way some people phrase shit, bro. No, like, like, this is they're just like, oh uh, yeah, we talked about um, how we created the video and like what made us laugh so hard and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got people like Louis Capaldi that just go and like their fucking Facebook and go, I done a shit this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so relatable, so much more relatable. That's it. Open up about your toilet habits. That's way fucking more interesting to me, to be quite honest. Not that I care. But with, and that's with, why that, I like, with that on his TikTok or his Facebook. <clears throat> that's why I love him because it, even though he's like a multi-millionaire now, 
he's just still acting like a dick and it's amazing. Just down to earth yeah. as fuck. I, yeah. I, I'm always I mean, like uh, I mean, I fuck him. I was at Liam Gallagher. It was one of the it was one of the Gallagher's men. Who the fuck is Lewis Capaldi? He Liam, then yeah. showed up wearing a fucking no Gallagher Liam Gallagher t shirt on stage with Liam Gallagher in the background <laughs> wearing, wearing a full Oasis get up. <laughs> and oh, genuinely on an Oasis. Fantastic. <laughs> I fucking loved it. It came out uh, to the the wrestling theme uh, with money, uh, money, money. Know, was, <laughs> Shane, McMahon's, Shane McMahon's wrestling theme. It's fucking <laughs> firing fake money at one of those fucking guns, one of those swag guns. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> I'm all about that shit. Uh, like, I, I love it when you see somebody, uh, you know, just just shine, just shine to their fullest potential. Not like the star Naomi, uh, known as the Glow from WWE, as fans want better for Naomi after Friday's SmackDown. Uh, spoilers ahead for all you WWE fans out there, no, but no. after. Uh, WWE, the, the, the fans are calling for WWE not to overlook Naomi and better appreciate her talent after oh she said I'm so tired of 2020 and everything in it, including Luke Evans <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically um, I've seen this uh, young wrestler perform and they are one of the most fucking talented people on the roster by far comes out and full blown fucking rave neon gear knee slides down the fucking ramp to the ring does a flying splits kick into the ring has the most unique array of uh, of spots and moves and gimmicks to pull off in the fucking ring. Turned up from, I think she was from NXT on a Royal yes. Rumble last year, got one of the biggest fucking pops you've ever heard of fucking wrestling. And since then, apparently, WWE's been doing what they do best, is totally flubbing her run. Uh, she did get a title run at one point. She had a cool custom neon title belt and everything. Uh, and yeah, for some reason when they have a full fucking package like that they still managed to botch it now i know that's maybe boring to some certain people but this went trending and everyone was really pushing and, uh, and asking for support because basically she got made to go out and fucking job to to someone whose gimmick is i'm a i'm a 50s kind of chick I'm, I'm like a captain america gal i don't vote yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does seem to be the case that, admittedly, I don't watch wrestling, but this young woman does sound enormously talented and most eminently watchable. So yeah. that if if the Air Wrestling Federation you speak of is treating her in such a manner, it seems like she needs to get a contract negotiation and either get somewhere else or get some lawyers involved because it sounds like she's been royally dicked over. Hello, you seem, uh, yeah, you seem to be new to WWE's envelope. Let me tell you how it works. <laughs> cool. Contract law in WWE is completely null and vo void in comparison to normal contract law. You sign that contract, you pretty much sell your soul to the devil. Mm -hmm. No matter they what your happens, name, you they own your life. Yes, the they own get out. The only way you're going to get out is through a scandal. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the last, time I watched anything wrestling, else, yeah. the last time I watched anything with wrestling is when my, my old TV bar and I lived back at my mum's could just about pick up Grampian television and I remember watching WCW. Wow. Yeah. That's like a, that's like a bit like yes. uh, that's like no like 95, 96. Jeez, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the good old days of wrestling too. <laughs> but like, yeah, like even if you aren't into wrestling, I think you can appreciate what's going on now as as the, the kind of counterbalance to cancel culture, where people are using a, a, a bit of a mob mentality or a, a, a fucking trend and agenda to point something out for good change. Now, wrestling might not be the top fucking agenda for that type of stuff, but it is really good to hear and see that someone who is fucking extremely talented, go and look up any of her matches on YouTube, or even on fucking Twitter, there's a that whole of short video. is a fucking banger. It's not banger, yeah. bro. She comes out, yeah, she's fucking so dancing. If, she, she's if she's so dark. talented, if she's so talented and stuff, which I, obviously I'm not disputing, mm -hmm. because you sound very animated about this, and obviously it's something mm -hmm. you would give quite more than a monkey's about. Yeah, to the point yeah, monkeys, in fact. It's like, <laughs> well, surely they're doing themselves in because it could be raking in the cash if this lass is so awesome. 
it's odd. It is odd. It, it makes no, no, right, sense. Right, right. Right. No, it does make it makes perfect. It makes perfect sense, right? And it all comes back down to the human psyche. The reason that they sign on for such a shitty contract is because WWE is the Disney of sports entertainment. Right? They, they, that's where they're going to get the most coverage. That's where they're going to get the most exposure. So they basically they're basically getting held at gunpoint, like negotiation wise. We're the only game in town. Yeah, pretty much. Ah, right, right. AEW right. made a real good play uh, in its first year and a half or so, but yeah, they're, 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 they, they've fallen by the wayside. It's become quite a bit of a comic. It's uh, kind of like how thing. in the states you've got the you've got the NFL, and they did try to have that other that the other NFL thing. That was yeah, the XFL, as well, yeah. actually. Yeah, that was Vince McMahon's pipe dream, uh, which he tried to reboot again just before didn't COVID. He, didn't he also get like Trump involved in that at one stage? Yeah, probably. Chris, they're, they're best buds. They were really tight ah. and close. But we don't do politics on this show, Zen. No, no, no. I'm just making the connections. That's all, boy. Just making the connections. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to knit it all together. Well, speaking of knitting it all together, I think that is a perfect time and place to fucking round up this week's festivities uh, and Aww. as we do traditionally <laughs> I like to go around the room and ask people what they got going on but I do also want you to have a little think while we're doing that about what we want to do for episode 100 uh, as it is to episode 99 today the 100th episode will video be podcast. next Sunday I've got my video doppelganger video. Okay, video podcast, doppelganger. Okay, I said to have a think about it, guys, not shout out like you have some yeah, sort of. Young <laughs> <laughs> no, oh god, no. Dinosaur oh, webcams. Why did you put I that in the Alex fucking isn't here with their makeup anymore? Oh, so. hell no. Right, okay. Nobody uh, needed that image. <laughs> Oh, we've got Candorian uh, kicking it silently in the chat there. Candor, you're just in time to promote some of your shit. If you got hands on your mic, buddy, you got anything you want to wanna plug? No, not this week. <laughs> oh, that is a fucking you let me down, Candle, really. Oh, good God. Uh, Manny, what's happening with the streaming and stuff, bud? What you got cooking in the oven? Hee-haw. Good stuff. That's that's <laughs> just what I want to hear. Now, I will uh, uh, preempt the, the, the presumptive nominee for Create Scotland admin, uh, Tony. I know we will have some campaigns coming up shortly, but we'll be discussing those in private. How about yourself? What's, what's, uh, what's new? Your area. Um, everything's new. I know you have a certain gig quite possibly coming up. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. a guest mix on a top tier radio show tonight. Ooh. Good Ooh. stuff, bro. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Where can folk catch that? Uh, half seven on a Paul Van Dyke's YouTube channel. That's banging, bro. That's banging. Mm-hmm. Well done. Is that going to be so that stream will be um, left up after? For VOD, that will yes. still be accessible after. after. Good, because this usually doesn't come until fucking Monday night. But yeah, uh, Yagi, I do know you have actually just managed to finish the long awaited Golf with Friends yep, film it's, it's just after lockdown. <laughs> Yep, so, and uh, tomorrow, well, now today actually, because, you know, podcast uploading time, Monday. Uh, I've got an article coming out, uh, fucking further pursuits for Red Dead Online concept, and then on the twenty fourth, as it will be teased in this article, I've got uh, an article about uh, a heists concept featuring nine heists for Red Dead Online. Yeah, so, I do want to say, uh, if you're not aware of the reading, folks, get 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 tuned into fucking Yangi stuff. He's uh, done himself real proud. We're all fucking rooting for you, bro. He's been getting in uh, a lot of fucking radio yourself. credits and stuff. <laughs> No, no, don't be nasty. He's he's done really well for himself, and uh, hopefully I can gonna... only be nasty. I've got nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> lead you on to, hopefully it's gonna lead you on to bigger and better things, Shaggy man. That's fucking. That's I got yourself, cool. Shaggy. Yeah. So uh, Zenblock, what, what you got cooking on the oven, bro? I uh, recently just did a my first ever live reaction video. I did that to the uh, Def Keeley's. Um, uh, showing of the dual sense. My volume was a bit off. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't realize because it was my first ever go at it. So that's what I fix in the future. Uh, yep. Speaking of the future, uh-huh. for anybody listening out there, yep, yep. Uh, you may remember in a previous edition of this wonderful podcast that I mentioned floating the idea of possibly doing my own podcast. I had mm-hmm. tried one a couple of years ago. It was didn't quite work for technical issues. I think I've solved said technical issues. Uh, I am now looking for cast members. 
So if you are out there, you are a Scottish gaming YouTuber who has a PlayStation 4 and is okay with minding your language because I keep my channel PG. So if you think you can not swear and speak uh, saliently on these on video game subjects, I'm then I invite you, uh, I invite you as a to um, give me a little message, you know, whichever format you like. We, and uh, we'll talk and uh, hopefully if I can get put together a, a decent little grab bag of possible candidates then hopefully on the last Thursday of every month we can set up a podcast and have a wee lovely wee blather. Can you? I like, eh? it. I like it man, that's good. Uh, how dare you come on this show and use it to secede, secede other people off on your own <laughs> podcast, you fucking bat. No, I'm not kidding, bro. Uh, that's that awesome. Awesome. <laughs> every, 15, every 15 minutes is the fuck uh, advert, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is affiliated only with fuck, yeah. So, uh, that's if you like swearing, go to this podcast. If you don't like swearing, go to this podcast. How do I get a feeling, how do I get a feeling like Wani is like, join his podcast and be like captain privilege will get so so he'll just join the ps4 party and just shout fuck and then leave again it's either that or you're going to be able to tell that he's sweating so badly trying not to swear <laughs> just saying freaking fluger and all this sort of stuff yeah you gotta turn into um, ned flanders <laughs> flippity flappity uh, <laughs> that's something think, different isn't it <laughs> I, I think uh, that's actually not too bad a shout for episode 100 I think now that uh, the restrictions have been laxed quite a bit there could be potential that uh, the, the, the three of us Yangi and Tech and myself could do this from the Fox Hub possibly Tech uh, and shared in privileges back there. Maybe, maybe we'll record ourselves and post it. I, I wouldn't want to go video uh, through the stream because his internet's as bad as mine at times. <laughs> Are you kidding um, me? Your internet is worse than dial-up, mate. See what I've done there, lads. So we'll be going for camera you're live on as on well. On yeah. the reason dial-up getting moved in. <laughs> I mean, dial up an upgrade. It, if it's on a Sunday and I've got the weekends off, I mean, wherever you guys are, I could possibly come along and we could film one, like, you know, like, all of us together in an actual physical space. I think right. that one would be good for a future show, uh, Zenblock, but we don't have enough microphone uh, input jacks for that. N nor do we actually <laughs> have a camera at the moment, so... Yeah, well, yeah. that's why I say... Ah. That's why I say do we maybe just film it and when we put yeah. the output we'll have our faces on or you know no faces well, you know, if, we'll we, if we had more know, if we had more patreons at this point we might be able to afford a camera so uh yeah. fucking patreon did you just plug the patreon <laughs> jesus christ or, i don't know if we had or, a patreon or, or, or. <laughs> maybe if the audio episodes had been uploaded in the past 19 weeks we would have lost our only fucking patron they aren't being uploaded you could just you could live stream it you could live stream it <laughs> Uh, live could yeah. live stream it. Oh, yeah, that, that's the only point that I will agree with. Proud man, or not? <laughs> You're good enough to live stream it. <laughs> You're literally lagging it so hard right now. I can barely so hear you say your own shit. Todd's place and live stream it <laughs> <be> there. <laughs> Aye, we just kicked in yeah. Todd. What man, like what's happening, Cod? We're using your space in it. Aye, <laughs> are we into the kitchen? <laughs> I'm going to wear, a f I don't have any green clothes, but I'm going to find green clothes and I'm going to wear them, so I'm just a floating head. That's why you just... Cool. That, that's a cool one, I Well... It's a green balaclava. <laughs> Speaking of a floating head, some eyes. I think it's time... <laughs> it's time to uh, put this old podcast out to pasture instead of letting it uh, float like a fucking horse's head above water. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning what the in. Fuck was that analogy? Everybody no for uh, paying attention over the past 99 episodes and I do hope you join us next week for episode 100 but in the meantime this wow. has been Captain Privilege with Grandmaster Tech and Yagi Young also starring uh, Mr. Candonian right at the end here Manny TV uh, presumptive nominee for the Create Scotland admin Tony and Tony Hendo and Yagi Oh, no. and Zenbloke, sorry. Uh, <laughs> once again, 
Much obliged, folks. Uh, this has been kept. You didn't even get a shout out to Dr. Dark Side, you absolute I know, animal. hey, Savage. Oh, I don't, because Dr. Dark Side's <laughs> always there. He's like in the pain. He knows, he knows. Uh, so I do. I missed him because of, cause of the DJ bots underneath him, all right? Don't start your shit. Don't, is he fucking sticking up for Dark Side? You don't know. You don't know my relationship with Dark Side. You don't know the grief he's put me through on this very show in the early That makes it even better. So thank okay. you, Dark Side, for putting him through. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, grief is text job. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh well, the Perium kind of tag team that at times, but let's. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> I gave it as good as I got, I suppose, anyway. But uh, until next time, folks, this has been Unmonetizable. So, uh, signing off, closing hail frequencies, end the Bye communications. Time. I'm going to go listen to <laughs> in the background a certain there. podcast. <laughs> Bye, driver. <laughs>